Welcome to the 30th lecture of surface engineering. Uh, this is going to be a brief discussion on the uh, need for uh, post carburizing heat treatment or post nitriding heat treatment. Usually one uh, certainly needs to carry out certain heat treatment namely the hardening treatment after carburizing. Uh, what we must realize is that uh, by way of carburizing you actually introduce carbon and make the surface ready for hardening. You are dealing essentially with a stock which has very low carbon 0.1, 0.2% carbon. So, even if you subject this whole component to hardening treatment, you may develop martensite, you may enforce martensitic transformation onto the surface, but that martensite will not have adequate uh, strength or hardness because the amount of carbon is inadequate. You require at least about 0.4 weight percent carbon or more to get the optimum martensitic hardness. And it is because of this reason you introduce carbon by carburizing. But then after the carburizing treatment which is a batch process, you actually uh, when you um, take the component out after carburizing treatment, you cannot immediately subject it to quenching simply because as I said it is a batch process either it is back carburizing or uh, liquid carburizing or um, some uh, gas carburizing. In all these cases, the chamber is enclosed, components are inside, so you have to break the vacuum or lift it out of the uh, uh, liquid bath or salt bath or um, uh, break open the, um, the solid mass that forms, uh, the sintered mass that forms uh, after um, back carburizing. So, you have to open the pack and then remove the materials and so by then they come to room temperature if not at least fair to fairly low temperature. So, already they are in the not in any longer in the austenitic range. So, they are already in the ferritic range. So, you have to uh, bring it to uh, in order to bring it to the martensitic uh, state or martensitic microstructure on the surface you again have to reheat and then quench. So, let us uh, look at as to uh, how we do it. Um, so, in this uh, if we look at the first slide you realize that, uh, so this is the uh, steel part of the iron cementite phase diagram and we are primarily concerned, so we are dealing with uh, an alloy which uh, basically is low carbon 0.2, 0 0.3% carbon and uh, uh, in order to uh, introduce uh, uh, carbon we took it to 930, 940 uh, in that temperature range, in this temperature range so that uh, carbon can diffuse in uh, faster and deeper. So, after that we uh, take it out and then we um, uh, when we take out of the chamber, this is what I was mentioning in a few minutes ago that the temperature already drops to fairly low temperature easily below maybe just a few hundred degrees, maybe 100, 200 degrees uh, just above room temperature. So, that is uh, the temperature range when you are in this uh, in the ferritic zone. So, there is no question of transformation ferrite into martensite. In order to do that you have to again reheat, go to the austenitic zone and then uh, quench, then only you can get martensite. So, what uh, th this is the general uh, uh, guideline for all kinds of heat treatments in steel. Uh, typically for hardening treatment this is the temperature band and since we are dealing with uh, low carbon, so this is the region of our interest. So, we do actually we carry out the, um, um, the carburizing treatment at slightly higher temperature. Since we do it at fairly high temperature and the time period is longer, so we generally end up getting a very coarse microstructure and uh, that is not very good that is actually detrimental for mechanical properties. So, when we reheat we reheat to uh, about this temperature and uh, from there we have to quench fast. And while talking about quenching, uh, uh, what we must realize is that um, uh, we have we are aiming a quenching rate which will be at least as fast as this. That means we must avoid the nose, and hence the so-called critical cooling rate, which is a minimum cooling rate that can uh, avoid intersect intersecting the perlitic or benetic start line, uh, is the so-called critical cooling rate and this uh, is what we must adopt. So, in other words we have to adopt some drastic quenching because this time period is very very small. 
Now, when we quench, then we convert the surface into martensite. That's our desired microstructural product. And uh, martensite actually can appear either in lath morphology or in acicular or plate morphology. So, uh, this is a typical microstructure that we aim to achieve onto the surface. But we also are aware that the carbon content and cooling rate both actually uh, decrease as we go from the surface to the core. So, if this is the surface and if this is the core, then carbon content is highest here and gradually decreases and the cooling rate also whatever we the temperature to which we uh, expose is of course, uh, highest at the surface, but uh, when we uh, uh, quench then the cooling rate will be the highest at the surface and the cooling rate also decreases as we go deeper inside the interior. So, in fact, the cooling rate that we uh, make sure uh, is actually applicable up to a certain depth from the surface and, and not beyond. So, below this the cooling rate will be lower and hence we end up getting a microstructure which can be just purely perlitic, coarse perlitic or perlitic or at the most fine perlite like this. In addition to, um, well, when, when we talk of carburizing, then it is all about martensite, it is all about martensite, the strength comes from martensite, nothing else. But when we talk of uh, nitriding, then of course, we have precipitates. And in ultra fine uh, condition, for example, uh, at the very beginning or if the nitriding period is very small or if for whatever reason we are able to create a condition whereby we have very a uh, very high nucleation rate, but very small growth rate. That means, we form a precipitate, a nitride, but we do not allow it to grow. So, if we have tiny little precipitates formed all over, then they and they are not allowed to grow, then some of these precipitates actually may maintain a uh, very small size and at the same time the surface will be at least semi coherent, if not coherent. But coherence is something we do not quite expect in case of nitride because the crystal structures are very different than the ferrite. So, if you have uh, two phases alpha and beta where these two are, have vastly different crystal structures, you do not expect coherency at the matrix. So, in, if you do not have coherency, then obviously you do not expect uh, precipitation hardening. But what you certainly expect is dispersion hardening. These nitrides actually offer the strength uh, to, the, to the surface by way of dispersing themselves in very fine form. Of course, remember this is a very uh, high resolution microstructure and transmission electron microscopy microstructure. So, typically these uh, precipitates are uh, very, very small. So, these kind of uh, uh, dispersoids or so called uh, precipitates which are incoherent precipitates will offer uh, or one strengthening and that is why we call it dispersion hardening. So, that is this side on the right is for um, uh, nitriding and this column is all for um, uh, this is all for um, carburizing. We need to uh, take a look uh, and, and sort of review the situation as to what happens after carburizing, what is the state after carburizing. So, first thing we realize that we have developed a compositional gradation. So, which can be easily from 0.2 weight percent to about 0.8 even 1.1 1 .1 weight, 1 .1 weight percent of carbon uh, at the surface. So, from the core to the surface. So, if this is the sample and if this is the core. So, from the core to the surface particularly uh, at the uh, top layer we have a gradation of composition. We also desire a gradation of microstructure because we want full martensitic on the top surface and certainly fine perlitic at the core. So, that we actually maintain a very high toughness at the core and very high wear resistance at the surface. So, both compositional gradation and microstructural gradation are desired. Now, after carburizing, um, well I am sorry this actually uh, should be higher almost above 930, uh, 950. Of course, carburizing is possible at 800 range as well, 830, 850 range as well, 
but uh, usually for larger components you expose to 930, 950 temperature range for about 600, 6 to 8 hours. What you develop throughout is a very coarse microstructure. So, the typical crystallite size would be fairly coarse. Now, this is good for converting into martensite, but not so good for uh, introducing or retaining toughness in the core. So, this core microstructure is not uh, is to be broken and is to be converted into finer microstructure. So, we need grain refinement. And uh, so, for all these reasons, uh, coarse in structure and, uh, in, uh, and, and taking care of the gradation of microstructure and composition, we require certain post carburizing heat treatment. So, that we improve and refine the microstructure, we achieve desired hardness and mechanical properties. We break the cementite network. Now, generally, if you go to 0.8 and above, or let's say 1% carbon or something, then the the austenite will be covered by a cementite network like this. So this will be your Fe3C if the uh, if the composition of the steel is hyper eutectoid. That means greater than 0.8% carbon. So, this cementite network actually uh, is very hard and also very brittle. So, if you already create such network, then you cannot do machining, you cannot do any post processing. So, this is not desirable and also it uh, actually creates a sort of a conflict with the martensitic post uh, uh, heat treatment martensitic microstructure. So, in order to break this uh, hyper eutectoid microstructure or cementite network, we also need a Heat follow up heat treatment and we also need a final tempering of the component because if uh, otherwise uh, the fully hardened microstructure is uh, very uh, hard and brittle. So, in order to uh, actually match this uh, difficult uh, demands of having uh, perlite in the core, modern site at the surface and yet there should not be any uh, very large uh, uh, grain size and also should not be lot of uh, stress uh, gradients. But of course, we want residual compressive stress on the surface uh, and high hardness and yet if we want some post processing machining or other treatments. So, we want certain amount to restore certain amount of machinability. So, keeping all these things in mind, we may require uh, a post processing heat treatment but uh, the, that is the final tempering treatment. But in general, you know, if we now look at, now imagine that this is a, a component that we have carburized and uh, the core is uh, 0 0.2 percent and the surface is uh, let us say 1 percent carbon. So, obviously, we are talking as if, talking about as if two different steels merged into one. So, for this Point 0.1 percent carbon, we do harden from above the AC1 eutectoid temperature, but for 0.2 percent, we harden or uh, normalize or whatever, we do it from above AC3, which is fairly higher than that. So, how do we match these two conflicting situations? We do it in this way. So, first of all, this is the hardening treat, this is the uh, typical uh, carburizing treatment. So, after carburizing, we bring it to room temperature. Then uh, we want to carry out uh, typical hardening treatment. So, if we do a single stage hardening treatment, then we have to go to above the uh, eutectoid temperature and, and then uh, quench. But since we are dealing with two different steels almost merged into one, the surface is at a fairly high carbon content and core is at a low carbon content. So, we now have to, uh, so this single treatment is not adequate. So, this is not adequate. So, then what we do is first we take care of the core because the core is at a higher carbon content. So, we heat to above AC3. So, we, um, so, if we do separately, then we might do something like this that we, uh, we can heat treat. So, first we heat the surface to much higher temperature and then we can uh, do repeat a similar hardening treatment for the surface um, uh, 
which could be either between AC1 and AC3 like here or just above AC1 and uh, when we quench in all the cases we actually are quenching sharp quenching so that there is no time lag and we come to room temperature uh, drastically so that we actually are able to convert austenite into martensite. But um, when we uh, do it uh, we can't do it separately for two different uh, parts of the component. So in the sense we cannot separate the component into two parts and then carry out two different treatments. So all these are hypothetical situations and not quite applicable because we are dealing with a single component. Now, in order to actually uh, carry out the uh, heat treatment to convert uh, austenite into convert uh, or, or obtain martensite onto the surface, we do a composite treatment like this. So, the component is the same. So, we first heat to above AC3 and then normalize. We do not necessarily quench, we just cool in air, still air, so that the coarse microstructure at the surface now converts into fine perlitic or fine ferritoperlitic microstructure good enough to give us fair amount of toughness. We do not want to develop very high hardness at the core. So, the core is not meant for very high hardness, it is only meant for providing toughness. Now, we reheat, so we bring to room temperature and then we reheat, but we do not reheat to above AC3, we reheat only above AC1 because the microstructure here is hyper eutectoid, so 0.8 and above. So, this requires does not require heating above ACM, it requires heating only above AC1 and from AC1 temperature just above AC1 temperature we need to quench. So, in the first leg, if this is the first leg which is meant for normalizing and what we get is fine light. In the second leg, when we heat from above AC1 and not above AC3, what we do is harden. And by hardening, we convert austenite into martensite. But actually, this uh, martensite, what we believe is to be martensite, is not 100%. If it is not 100 percent, then what else does it have? It is likely to have retained austenite, which is not very uh, conducive for uh, dimensional accuracy or, um, uh, or the uh, volume uh, of the material, because during heat treatment or during subsequent use uh, in operation due to thermal, uh, mechanical activation, this uh, uh, retained austenite can convert either into bainite or into martensite depending on the path it follows. So, in either case there is a possibility of again uh, expansion or contraction volume change and that means it can it may develop cracks onto the surface which is what is undesirable. So, after the quenching we actually after the final quenching we actually can carry out uh, uh, tempering to convert uh, part of the martensite into tempered martensite. Uh, and then we, uh, the, uh, we carry out the final tempering, final hardening and then we do a final tempering at a lower temperature, which is only for stress relieving. So, by and large what we need to understand is that uh, carburizing is a treatment, is a process to introduce carbon. So, now you make it ready, you convert a 0.2 percent carbon steel and make it ready with certain enrichment of carbon up to the level of 0.8 one up to 1 percent carbon and with such enriched carbon uh, in carbon enriched surface what we now need to do is to take it to uh, only above AC1 and then quench and convert into martensite then it is hardened then we can talk about all the improved mechanical properties. But the core since it is at 0.2 percent we need to heat above AC3 and then air cool which is normalizing to get fine perlitic microstructure. So, um, what all we have discussed briefly here, we have discussed the post carburizing heat treatment that is needed because of uh, the requirement to develop uh, the complex graded microstructure and also because we have uh, widely uh, varying uh, composition from the surface to the core. Uh, 
Um, we don't need a similar treatment for nitriding because the hardening is coming not from martensite, it is coming from nitrides which are already formed during the pro nitriding process itself. So, the material is ready for use just after the nitriding treatment. Um, the carburizing treatment un unfortunately is a batch process, it is not a continuous process because you need to break the atmosphere, you need to break the carbon rich atmosphere and then take it out and then you do carry out the heat treatment. So, it cannot be a continuous process except in very rare cases of some gas carburizing treatments. Uh, the microstructural gradation we need because we need martensite, predominantly martensite to uh, or at the end may be tempered martensite, predominantly martensitic or tempered martensitic to all the way to simply pearlitic or ferritopearlitic microstructure. The composition does play a role. If you are dealing with uh, alloy steel, you treat in a way. If you deal with uh, plain carbon steel, then obviously the temperature and time requirements are little different. And we certainly need a final tempering treatment so that the stresses are relieved and some amount of machinability is restored. Now, it is also time that we take an uh, overall view of all the possibilities of <coughs> hardening that we have discussed so far uh, with regards to primarily steel. So, we have discussed uh, uh, three types of uh, approaches hardening, carburizing and nitriding. Hardening is without change in composition, so it is simply microstructural modification. Carburizing and nitriding is thermochemical treatment where we change the composition of the surface. In carburizing we introduce carbon, in nitriding we introduce nitrogen. So, the, the components and the parts that we actually subject for such treatments uh, need not be exactly the same type. For example, compositionally one can easily say that for hardening we actually require uh, carbon rich uh, or at least uh, the component should have adequate carbon, uh, easily around 0.4 percent carbon for minimum whereas carburizing nitriding is done with very low carbon. The parts uh, and their utilities will determine what kind of treatment you actually take and uh, the effectiveness of the treatment will depend upon the temperature, time, atmosphere and various surface preparation methods that you adopt. The heat treatment is required only for carburizing and in hardening treatment is itself uh, a heat treatment process. So, there is no separate heat treatment required, there is no post processing hardening treatment required for hardening, but carburizing does require one. The strengthening mechanism in hardening carburizing is the same, is the martensitic hardening, but in nitriding it is different, it is the presence of these nitrides. The uh, microstructural variation from top surface to the uh, along the cross sectional plane is uh, a smooth one, is to be understood, is to be developed carefully so that the uh, final purpose is served. But end uh, result or the end aim is uh, hardness, lowering of friction coefficient, improvement in wear resistance and in some cases even corrosion resistance for nitriding cases. Um, so, we actually uh, at the end of these last few lectures, uh, 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 maybe starting from 21st or one of those lectures wherein we started discussing all these uh, um, hardening processes and in fact even before hardening processes we discussed the short pinning, shock pinning processes. So, now is the time for uh, all of you to sit down and take a stock of what all you have learned, what are the purpose, what were the purpose, what were the end results, what microstructure, what mechanism of strengthening how do they compare with each other in terms of uh, process difficulty or ease, the process parameters, time, temperature, atmosphere, various other implements necessary, what is the level of property changes that you bring in, what are the merits, what are the demerits and uh, finally, the applicability for various industrial practices. So, I hope you have uh, uh, picked up some good threads for self-study. And I would definitely implore upon you that uh, lectures are only a uh, supplementary tool, are only to expose you to the sub subject. But uh, in order to uh, derive the required knowledge, you must do self-study and refer to the textbooks given at the end of the lecture series.
Uh, thank you very much.